and need a return ticket where you're going. This is a one-way journey. Sorry, no! station. We've purchased a super saver return to Fun City and our return light commences at an off-peak time. The buffet car is open, serving light snacks and refreshments, including our first challenge, set by the Games Master. My first challenge is on the 3 do shoot 'em up Nova Store. Players have 60 seconds to score as many points as possible as they fly across the inhospitable terrain of an alien world. Keep an eye out for the power-up which appears during the first part of the challenge, allowing contestants to inflict some serious damage on the alien horde. So, please welcome for challenge number one, James Lawton and Chris Cole. Okay, now Chris, we'll start with you. Um, what's, what's been your hairiest game-playing moment? Um, well, it's probably when the power went off when I was like a centimetre away from completing Zelda. The whole power yeah. went down. Where about do you live? In Stoke. Is it interesting in Stoke? Is it? No, it's pretty boring, really. So a power cut wouldn't have made any much difference, really. No. Um, James, what about your hairiest game playing experience? Oh, I fainted once. Fainted? Where about you when you fainted? Uh, around Chris's house. So basically, the message is if you want to have a pleasant game playing experience, don't go to Chris's. I think. Yeah. I'm amazed you're still friends. Okay, so um, while we argue about the merits and demerits of being a, a friend of Chris's, we'll take a look at this week's news. Ah, Opening across the country this week, the film that's been smashing records in America all summer, The Lion King. Animators who worked on the film have been keeping busy collaborating with top software company VIE on a game version. With levels based directly on scenes from the film, this will be a very faithful conversion, if disgustingly cute and icky. Appearing in a shop near you now, the first affordable virtual reality headset, Cybermax. If you've got a PC, you can ride this virtual ghost train in the comfort of your own home. Unfortunately, though, it can't be used with existing games like Doom, but big companies will be making future releases compatible with this 500 quid piece of tragically unhip headgear. Hey, look, it's Swindon on a summer's day. No, it's not. It's actually Dino Island, the latest motion theatre ride that's opened in America. The game uses the same graphic techniques as Jurassic Park, and this looks set to be just as successful as that film without being as overrated. Finally, the Games Master Network launched last week has taken off like a rocket, with people called things like Jim the Highlander phoning up. We'll give you the logon number at the end of the show. Does a giant creature lurk below these peaceful waters? No, of course it doesn't. But with the lack of a decent football team, it's nice that we Scots have got something Americans will believe in. And it gives me the chance to meet yet more attractive birds. Through sonar, we've been able to locate what we believe to be Nessie's lair. But there was a new twist. She appeared to have eggs. Oh yeah, Jimmy Hell. The rescue operation will be conducted using advanced submersibles. These will be operated by teams of six volunteer scientists. The team will consist of a commander who leads the team and navigates, a pilot who actually maneuvers the vehicle through the lock, two robotic arm operators who will pick up the eggs and other objects, and two periscope operators who will have a 360 degree view of the lock. And all of them fancied me. As the more astute of you will have guessed, this isn't the real Loch Ness. It's a virtual Loch Ness, as presented in the latest interactive ride it just opened in the States. The ride takes place in a real-time 3D environment with eight separate submersibles fighting for the eggs and the chance to make their own Loch Ness omelette. Oh, no, come on, shoot back him. However, I fancied the crew more than our chances. <laughs> 
then, with her unerring instinct for disaster, my pilot aims straight for a whirlpool. Yes, there was Nessie and her eggs. It was time for my crew to prove they weren't just giggly Americans, but as we went for the egg, another team scuppered us. Finally, though, the coast was clear. It was now or never. Do or die. But then it was all over. My team was pants. And the news here is that Simon Byron's riding shotgun with me for this one. What can you recommend our players to do on this? 15 seconds in, there should be a, a power-up appearing, which, uh, if you can collect, um, would boost his firepower, so it's worth going for. OK, best of luck to both our challengers. James is playing first. James, you have one minute to score as many points as you possibly can. Your time starts now. So off goes James at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. You can see his energy level. That's not going to offer much in his time challenge, though. More importantly, at the top of the screen, you can see his score. He's got 21,930 points so far. Not a bad start, Simon. Very good, Tom. Very good. OK, and he's getting some worries up to 58,000 now. This power-up's going to appear. There it is. There's a power-up. There's the power-up. If he can get us now, what's that, Simon? That's going to boost his fire. Power, okay, he's got increased power power now, and he's making the most of it. He's up to 187,650 points. There's over 210,000 now. He's really going great guns. This is a great performance, Simon. Yeah, he can't afford to miss anything, Dominic. Okay, he has just got 241,000, and he's got about seven seconds left, though. He's just going to get those last few uh, spaceships. Three, two, one. Out of time. Sure. Stop the challenge. 376,900 points. James, and make way for Chris. Yeah. Okay, Chris, you have got to beat 376,900 points. Best of luck, your one minute starts now. So of course Chris is scoring the top of the screen there. Not a lot of ships just now, it's, uh, it's not terribly exciting just now. I don't know, have you got any jokes, Simon? Uh, no. No, well I've got one. These three blokes walk into uh, a bar and, uh, oh no, but there's some action on screen, so we'll never know the outcome of that. 29,240 points. I reckon it's about power up time now, Simon. That's right, Tommy. Just after this wheel. There it is. And there goes Mr. Power Up. He's got like, he's in an increased fire power situation. 136,000 points. I reckon he could possibly beat James, I think, Simon. I don't think so, don't I? You don't think he will? OK, well, we'll back to differ on that one. He's up to 210,000 points. And we're coming. He's got about 10 seconds left now, though. 200... Oh, I think, what? It's going to be very close this time. It is, Dominic. 285,000. He's got about three seconds left. Two, one. It's going to be very close. Ooh. Stop the challenge! And he has just done it with the <laughs> last shot of the game. 385,510 points. Chris is the winner. <laughs> James, that was very, very close there. Where did you lose those crucial th couple of thousand points? At the beginning. Yeah, to, what, to, to go out to get your aim, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Chris, I think we've lifted the curse of Chris. No one fainted, no one was sick, no lights went out, and you won. Uh, did you, were you a bit scared at all, or did you know you were going to win all the time? No, I was quite surprised, really, because I had a bad beginning, and it sort of came together at the end, and finally I beat him. And everybody's all smiles because Chris is going home with the Games Master Golden Joystick. the nation rises in unison to acclaim Chris's effort and say, I could have done better. Let's take a look at this week's reviews. Doom 2 on the PC has an 18 certificate, so we can only show you the cute bits. Sorry, but rules are rules. Hi, my name's Adrian, and I have a confession to make. I'm a Doomaholic. I've been playing it 12 hours a day, but recently I've curbed my habit by playing Doom 2. It's got guns in it. It's very bloody, it's very violent, and it's very fast-paced. There are adventure elements, and there are loads of weapons to pick up, and there are loads of things you do have to figure out. But other than that, you pretty much shoot everything and find your way out of the level. It's excellent, but it's not really a sequel. What makes Doom and Doom 2 so exciting for the game player is the involvement of it all. The graphics are stupendous, they actually convince you that you're in an alien landscape. In a way, Doom 2 is really just a set of data discs for Doom 1. There's hardly anything different. You get a new gun and there's a bunch of new monsters. But at the end of the day, you're just getting a whole load of new levels for Doom, and that's no bad thing. Patrol is the follow-up to the brilliant Zombies Ate My Neighbours, but is Mr. Dodgy's sequel going to pay a visit? 
It's got a wonderful humour to it. It's basically very much in the line of the 50s B-movie horror film with um, all sorts of ghouls and goblins that you've got to track down. And uh, there's a lot of tongue-in-cheek drama to it. I like it a lot. It's a good involving game. If you remember Zombies Ain't My Neighbours, then you'll have a very good idea of what Ghoul Patrol is going to be like. It's a maze action, you know, very gauntlet-inspired. Run around, save the hostages, shoot the ghosts, get out of the level. Basically, there's too much roaming around, collecting things for uh, my liking. This isn't really as good as the first game. It's a bit too complicated, and some of the levels are far too large. You get lost very easily. The extra power-ups and extra bonus items do add a little to the game, but there's really not much here to recommend it over the original. Finally, how original a one-on-one -on -one beat em up Except this time it's on 3DO, it's Way of the Warrior, and it's a wee bit grungy. It uses large digitised actors instead of sprites, but it's not very fluid. It's actually quite difficult to control the characters, and there doesn't seem to be much in the way of realism involved in the fighting. It's a lot better looking than, say, Mortal Kombat 2 or Super Street Fighter. What Way of the Warrior really lacks is a strong, weighty feel. Each of the characters feels too light and airy. For a game to be really smart on uh, something like the 3DO, it's going to have to have brilliant graphics, brilliant sound, and it's going to have to move really quickly. And I'm afraid Way of the Warrior just doesn't do that. While tonight's special guest is busy chalking his tip, let's go over to Games Master and find out what he'll be playing. My next challenge is on Jimmy White's snooker on the Mega Drive. The contestant had to prove his superiority by pocketing the balls on a real snooker table before the Mega Drive clears its own computer version. The human player should have the advantage when it comes to obtaining shots, but be warned, the computer never misses. Now, when he was last on this show, both of us had a lot more hair, but I'm still pleased to welcome back the people's champion, Whirlwind Jimmy White! the machine. How's that yep. going to be different than playing there against, say, Stephen Hendley? Um, well, a little bit different. I'm going to try and um, beat the machine by time. I'm going to put maybe a red and all the colours. Yep. Hopefully faster than the machine. Yep. And probably the machine will be a bit more charismatic and have less spots than Stephen as well. <laughs> it's a nice guy. <laughs> That's Scottish well as done. well. <laughs> if you want to see who wins this Man Machine Challenge, join us after the break. <laughs> Something of a first on Games Master today because Jimmy White is going to attempt a red black colours clear up in a faster time than the Mega Drive can do a similar clear up on the actual Jimmy White snooker game. Helping me out is Games Master's own Andy Hutchinson. Andy, there's a lot of burning questions in snooker just now, probably the most flame drilled of which is Is John Virgo funny? Oh, I'm afraid not, Dominic. He's about as funny as a bank holiday Monday in real. I feared as much. And uh, do you have any tips for Jimmy today? Yeah, I hear that Mr. Gennard in the 215 at Newmarket is a good each way bet. Okay, thank you. We'll bear that one in mind, Andy. Right, best of luck, Jimmy. Your time starts now. Okay, both the computer and Jimmy lining, lining up, up that first red, yes. Jimmy's got quite a difficult shot here. It's quite close to the cushion. It's going up. Oh, oh it's it just there. rattles, but the computer's potted the red. The computer's ahead. Jimmy lines up the red. Yes! It goes in. But the computer's part of the black, so the computer's ahead, Andy. That's right. Jimmy's just lining up this black now. Again, it's not an easy one because he's got that inverse angle on it. Ooh. Just trickled there. Again, Jimmy misses the black. The computer now is on the yellow. The computer's the yellow. The computer two balls ahead. That's the black. Fine recovery shot there from Jimmy. Ooh. Nearly on and off there. Narrow, narrowly avoiding disaster there. The computer's on the green though now, and Jimmy's on the yellow. What's the green, Jimmy? The yellow, the yellow's in. Great shot from Jimmy. Yeah, he's coming back. He's fighting back. Bit of, um, bit of follow through there. Um, That's right. Come back. He's not going to let any console beat him. Computer's on the brown. Jimmy's on the green. Oh, 
Jimmy Paul to Green in the computer parts of Brown at almost exactly the same time. Okay, Jimmy's Glorious. on the Brown now. He's, Jimmy's very calm for a man who's one ball behind the computer, Andy. That's right. This is a glorious queuing, actually. Brown goes in. The computer's got himself in a bit of a difficult one with the blue there. That's right. It's got an extra kiss on it. Not much of a whirlwind going on that mega drive. Lines up the blue, yes, the blue is in. Shot. And now they're both here. on the pink. It's level pink in the computer and Jimmy. Yes, the oh, pink's in one shot. more. It's really tricky black here. possible, both on the black, Jimmy's, can Jimmy do it? He's gone for the treble, oh, the gets a double kiss on it, oh! oh just misses it. The computer's about to take the shot, this is going to be desperately close. Jimmy sinks in, he's done it! Oh, I will not have the margins, Jimmy White wins the challenge! Oh, Jimmy. Now, uh, Jimmy, that was very close at the end there, eh? Uh, what was with that first black, though? What, what happened? Well, yeah, it was a bit difficult, the first black. Um, it's a bit of a gap, and uh, yeah, we run out of space the there. Break, but, uh, apart from that, it went yeah. okay. So you don't have problems out of the crucible, then? No, we don't. We have a bit of a squeaky floor, but it, the, <laughs> the floor is there. Yeah. Well, listen, Jimmy, it's been brilliant to have you back on again. You've proven once and for all that man will always be better than machine. Please, give a round of applause. Golden joystick winner, Jimmy Wallen white <laughs> It's time for some more lost souls to seek consolation in the consultation zone. Greetings from my video gaming boards. Who's first to try and break my bouncing back? Games Master, I've heard that there are a load of firebombs hidden in Super Metroid on the SNES. Is that true? You mustn't believe all you hear, but in this case it happens to be true. Luckily, it's quite simple. First, collect the jump boots from Warfare Area A. Once done, return to Brinster Area F and destroy the evil crane to get the various things. Go back again to Warfare, this time to Area F, and collect the speed booster. Back in Warfare A, dash past the rooms with the closing doors to get the crucial ice beam. Finally, return to Brinster Area A. Once there, use the ice to reach the top of the chasm and follow the path right down the left. And you'll finally be rewarded with those super fire bombs. Ah, oh, thanks, Games Master. Any other simple ones? Games Master, I'm really good at micro machines on the Game Gear. Is there any way of making it harder? Indeed, there is. When you've almost completed the qualifying lap, turn the boat right round and go back over the line. You will now find that you've got super turbo speed. But that should give you speed sweets, Happy. Thanks, Game Master. Bring on another. Are there any power-ups hidden inside the moth on the Jaguar Games Master? Actually, there are. And the clue to get them should have been given to you while flying over the planet Kovacs. There, etched on the surface, you will see the code 6009. Go to the planet selection screen and enter this code on the keypad. You will be transported to a new universe with planets whose names are unknown. Select the planet in the bottom right of this galaxy and you will find it to be the most bountiful planet in the solar system. Collect all the powers there to give your car extra weapons and fuel. That's great, Games Master. Thanks. Once again, I've spent my forces in the pursuit of the common good, so I'm off for a rest. Bye -bye. We're about to slip down the end of show slide, but before we do, let's find out what the final challenge is from Games Master. My final challenge today is on the Neo Geo platformer, Top Hunter. Contestants have one minute to earn as many points as they can as they battle their way through an army of unsavory adversaries. A transporter is available for those players who prefer a little artificial aid and, once acquired, should improve their performance dramatically. Good luck. And here to play our final challenge, we have Colin Quinton and Jonathan Platts. Jonathan, you were telling us earlier that your favourite film is Lethal Weapon, but you'd rather be Arnold Schwarzenegger than Mel Gibson. Why is that? 
Well, he's bigger and tougher, and he's got quite a lot of money. Yeah, and of course Mel Gibson doesn't have any money, does he? Well, no, he has quite a lot of money. Mel's skint, isn't he? He's down at DHSS every Friday without fail. <laughs> Sorry, I just find that very amusing. Um, OK, right then, um, we're going to you now, Colin. Um, now, you, you were telling us that your favourite band is Ace of Bass, is that true? No, I lied. It's uh, like? actually Too Unlimited. What do you like about Too Unlimited? Is it the, uh, the banal lyrics or the annoyingly repetitive theme tunes? No, it's the babe. Oh, the babe. Yeah. Great. Um, so, Colin Jonathan, if you'd like to take your places, uh, we'll get ready to play the game. Make sure your pets are locked safely indoors because Dave Perry is with us. Dave, now, I reckon there's two ways of going about this. Would I be correct? That's right. There are two things our contestants can do. Firstly, they could, as they go through the level, they could beat up the characters they meet along the way and pick up the coins they get to collect more points. Or they can ignore the characters, go for a straight speed dash to get to the transporter at the end, and then use that to smash their way through things to get even more points. Okay, thank you very much, Dave. Jonathan is going first. Whoever can get the most points in one minute will take the joystick. Best of luck, Jonathan. Your one minute begins now. Okay, at the top left of the screen, you can see the number of points they've got. He hasn't got anything yet, Jonathan. And there's an energy bar just below it, so you can keep track of how well he's doing. That's right, he's just charging for the level at the moment. You can jump from foreground to background in this game. At the moment, he's sticking with the foreground, and he's chosen, he's chosen he's to beat up the guys. That's good. That's full, of, that's full of jewels, that first chain. The second chain in the background there isn't worth pulling. It's just got time in it. Right, after 5,900 points now, 27 seconds, gone nearly halfway through. How's he doing, Dave? He's not doing too bad. He's missed a few guys. I'd like to have seen him beat them up and pick up the coins, because obviously that's the thing he's chosen to do. particular bed, no, Dave. That's right. I just want to see people getting beaten up. There you are. He's got the transporter. Right, OK. 41 seconds, gone. We're going to see some serious uh, one, on one action here now, Dave. Absolutely. He's pretty well in invincible in this transporter. He can just smash everything up that he encounters. I because so, he's only got 10 points. seconds now. He's got 8, 7, 6. He's running out of time. He's in the Dave. background. There's a lot of guys there. And 4, 3, a lot of guys. Two, Pull that chain. 1. Out of time. Stop the game. 9,400 points for Jonathan. Make way for Colin. 9,400 points, Dave. How would you assess that score? That's not a bad score, but he was missing an awful lot of points along the way. He didn't quite get the hang of jumping from full ground to background and vice versa. OK, we'll see if Colin can do a bit better. Colin, your 60 seconds begins now. So, 9,400 points. See the score on the top of the There's a ball coming to kick, Dave. Off he goes. Yes, oh, you want to you wake him up and give him a good kick in because he'll drop his points. He's another one of his little chums there. That's right. There's lots of them in there in the tent. He's beating them up. He, they left the coins, but he didn't collect the coins. So that's a waste of points. Admit, we were a bit concerned about your score. We didn't think it would be enough, but in, in the end it was. Why do you think that was? Oh, he's good, but he's just not good enough. I think that is probably <laughs> the biggest understatement since I don't know when. Colin, does your mum know you're out? <laughs> I mean, what happened? I don't know. I just fell apart, I suppose. It was, it was nearly as big a mystery as um, two unlimited's continued chart success. There, I have to say. Thanks so much for coming along anyway, Colin. But the golden joystick goes to Jonathan. of time here. I'm off to put that two unlimited tape at the top of your pile for when your mates come round. We'll see you next show. Bye-bye.